Welcome to Just One More Watch. I'm feeling terribly British today, which doesn't happen very often. Why? Because I'm reviewing a watch that is designed and built in Great Britain, which again doesn't happen very often. And not just any old part of Blighty, but Cambridge no less. It's called the Seeker and it is the second watch by Cambridge-based microbrand Bowcroft. Brand owners Matt and Kareem got in touch with me earlier on this year, asked if I would be interested in reviewing their new watch. I had a good look at it and I said, yes please. Tally-ho chaps. Bowcroft are an interesting company. The focus is very much on the design of the watches. They are a member of the Association of British Watch and Clock Makers, which is an association that seems to be gathering in numbers and strength over the last couple of years. They give a portion of profits back to various charities. The watches are the officially licensed watches of Cambridge University. Who knew that universities had officially licensed watches? And they're clear that their watches are designed for everybody, not specifically pitched at men or women, for example. And I think the design, the size, the proportions of the Seeker very much reflective of that. I don't imagine this is going to be a massive seller. The sizing and the looks are a little bit too niche for that. But I reckon it's one of these watches that if you like it, then you will love it. Now you saw the pop-up. This video is sponsored by Bowcroft. I will of course therefore leave a link to the listing for the Seeker in the description of the video. They are taking pre-orders for these watches now, but shipping in a few weeks time at the price of 400 Great British Pounds. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. Okay, so they've just launched the Seeker. 400 pounds is the current going rate for one. And the first 100 pre-orders will be available for December delivery. So you're getting this one before Christmas if it's a gift for yourself or for someone else. I reckon this is definitely a watch that could be shared by a couple, by the way, more on that later. The packaging is very pleasant indeed. The outer sleeve advertises many of the things that I just told you in the intro. The membership of the British Watch and Clockmakers Association and the charitable donations, for example. And beyond that, you get a lovely box. It reminds me of the black ash furniture that you used to get in the 1980s. Maybe that's why I like it. There's also a care and warranty instruction card provided and a two year warranty, by the way. And there you go. That is the Bowcroft Seeker, one of two prototypes they sent me for review. In addition to this lovely salmon on the mesh strap, they also sent me this deep green fume dial on a brown leather strap as well. All specs are the same apart from the weight of course. I'll rotate through the two pieces over the course of the video. All right then, dimensions. These are 37 mil in diameter, 11 mil thick. Lug tip to lug tip is really short today, at only 42 mil. It's 18 mil between the lugs. Now, obviously the weight varies. On this leather, it comes in at 49 grams. I know it's small, but that is one of the lightest autos that I've ever looked at. 76 grams if you go for it on the mesh strap instead though. Water resistance is 50 meters, crystal is double dome sapphire, and the movement in the back is a Miota 9039. With a custom rotor, that's a nice touch. It's the Bowcroft logo there, which almost replicates the center of the rotor itself, repeated ad infinitum and printed in black. It's a good looking movement, the Miota. There's some Tokyo stripes and enough exposed jewels to keep things interesting. There are 24 of those jewels, by the way. It both hacks and hand winds. The power reserve is around 42 hours. Factory tolerances are minus 10 to plus 30 seconds per day, but most I've seen come in around the plus 10. It does only wind in one direction though, and it's a light watch. You can definitely feel the wobble when it spins in the other direction. It's still a good choice for this watch overall though, because it keeps it slim. Case, now I did say Bowcroft were all about the design of the watches, and indeed they're doing things here that I haven't seen elsewhere. The side of the case is high polish, but there's a large scalloped area that has been very lightly bead blasted, as have the upper lug surfaces. Very unusual, I don't think I've ever seen this before in terms of the finish or in terms of what they've done cutting out the case. This really does give it a rather elegant arc to the watch when viewed from the side profile, and it serves to make it look even smaller on wrist. The fixed bezel is high polish, the sapphire is double domed, but it's a very, very mild dome. Help keeping the watch at bang on 11 mil thick. It's also a small crown. Five millimeters again with the Bowcroft logo, but this time laser etched rather than painted. I must say, I didn't enjoy the crown. You just got your first advance warning of the moans and niggles for later. And the mesh is fine, not too thick, not too thin, just about right for this size and style of watch. All the links are neat and tidy and it has quick release spring bars 
and a security fold over, this time with the Bowcroft brand name, again laser etched. I don't mind a mesh, and I'm always really pleased to see a security fold over. Without it, your sapphire crystal is only one wrong move away from a close encounter with a hard surface. The leather strap is okay, if nothing special for a £400 watch. This one is a kind of chestnut brown, perhaps something slightly lighter in tone would have helped emphasize the dial on this particular watch. Quick release spring bars again, there's a soft backing material making it comfortable at least, double retainers and high polish hardware again with the Bowcroft logo etched into it. All right, dial and hands, Bowcroft definitely have a look and that's pretty impressive considering this is only their second watch. The dial is stepped, meaning the inner portion is recessed relative to the outer portion and those high polished silver baton indices intersect the two portions of the dial. They embed in the outer portion but sit proud on top of the inner portion. The four major indices are like little lollipops with some loom on their paddle tips. I will show you the loom shortly. Those indices and the lack of date keep things nice and symmetrical, and they have gone a different route than most brands do with the branding itself. The logo is on its own, above the pinion, equidistant between the pinion and the tip of the index, and the brand name, place of origin, and the ubiquitous, seemingly ubiquitous automatic beneath it. Now, I could probably have done without them putting automatic there, to be honest, especially with a further two lines of text above it. Definitely non-traditional, and I would normally have a go at a brand putting a place name on the dial, unless, of course, the watches were assembled there. But in this case, they are almost assembled there, so it actually seems kind of appropriate. They're just the right length with the tip of the hour hand almost kissing the indices as it passes and the tip of the minute hand arcing exactly over the minute markers. The second hand is a super skinny needle which you can thread due to the skeletonized counterbalance. Overall, it is a very pretty dial. It's not a big watch, but they've managed to get lots of detail in there, but without making it look crushed or cluttered. It is not going to appeal to everyone though. Again, more on that later. Loom, I said there was some loom, there is some loom, but there isn't much loom. They're actually gonna change from C3 to BGW9 for production units. I hope they also put a few more layers of loom on the hands, particularly for production units, because as it stands, it's not very good. On this style of watch, I guess any loom is a bonus. It's probably best to think about it in those terms. On wrist then, these are obviously smaller and lighter. So unless they're doing something horribly wrong with the case of the crown, then they're gonna wear really well. And indeed they do wear well on my seven inch wrist. The mesh is comfortable, no hairs removed at all, and it does have that security fold over. So you can wear it really loose if you want to, but still wear it with confidence. You do get some fleck toe from the domed sapphire. I'm not sure if there's any AR undercoating. It's not a big issue though, especially not on the salmon dial version because it is a paler color. Now, if I pull back a little, you can see it on my wrist from higher up. You know it's small, but it is still wearable on my average size seven inch wrist. And then if I go to a couple of pocket shots, again, it's good to see the size of the watch in context. You can judge whether it's a size that you will get on with long term. And I even cracked out the pink floral shorts for this one in its honor. All right, moans and niggles. I do have a couple today. Look, I'm not gonna critique the design. This one is sure to have its fans and also its detractors. I'm sure you will tell me in the comments section which camp you belong to. I like it. It's nicely done and it's different. Bowcroft, as discussed, have a look and that isn't easy on your second watch and in an increasingly saturated market. Now, Bowcroft make no secret of the fact that their watches are not aimed at one sex or any of the 74 current genders. They are for anyone who finds their designs appealing. Now, that sounds great on paper because you aren't there for cutting off 50% of your potential market straight away, but you have gotta be careful you don't end up making a product that ends up appealing to neither sex or any of the 74 genders. I suspect this one may find more fans among females than many of the watches that I review on the channel. And that, of course, is perfectly fine. I know that many couples share watches and this could definitely be bought on that basis. But darling, I bought it for us, you know, that type of thing. But the Seeker therefore definitely is not going to appeal to big guys who like big watches. I think Matt and Kareem are okay with that though. When you're talking about the first 100 watches being delivered by Christmas, that kind of puts a box around their sales expectations for this one. But I am gonna have a bit of a pick at two elements that I felt could and should have been better for the price they're charging. 
400 pounds is close to 500 USD, plus or minus taxes, of course, and this is not a spec monster. It's not a big dive watch on an integrated bracelet, no ceramic bezel inserts, etc. It has a limited number of elements and components. It is, however, British assembled. That's not cheap compared to the Far East, so I'm sure that has accounted for a fair portion of the budget. But it's not a watch that feels particularly expensive, either in hand or on wrist. The crown, I must say, is one of the least pleasant crowns that I have used on a watch. Because of its design, it's kind of flare design, it's thin and it's sharp at the point that it meets your fingers. And that's a shame because the crown is one of the few tactile engagement points that you have with a watch. Not ideal when it gives you the uh, when you operate it. It looks nice, it's styled to match the watch, but yeah, it's just not pleasant in use. And the leather strap does not feel particularly expensive because I presume it is not particularly expensive. Again, I wonder how much of the budget has gone into paying for British assembly that would otherwise have gone into more premium straps and accessories. So there's definitely a trade-off there. I said I was feeling British in the intro, perhaps not British enough to appreciate the somewhat intangible benefits of that in balance with some of the more tangible material trade-offs as a consequence of its British assembly. Regardless, I wish them well with the launch of the Seeker. Perhaps if you are visiting Cambridge or its university next year, you may well spot a few of these on the wrists of the locals. So there you have it, a fairly small watch aiming for a fairly small slice of the market. Perhaps though this will be the go-to timepiece for the students of Cambridge University next year. I do appreciate the effort that went into the design. British assembly is not cheap, but I would have appreciated a slightly better leather strap and a slightly nicer crown. If you want to buy from a British brand, but not this British brand, check out this British brand or that British brand. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. I hope to see you again in the next one.